Hello, I'm Sarah, one of the librarians at Vision Australia Library. This week we're celebrating NAIDOC Week and the theme for this year is Because of Her We Can. So we thought it was a great opportunity to showcase some of the great fiction available from Indigenous writers. I particularly wanted to talk today about this one. It's called Terra Nullius and it's by Claire G. Coleman. She's a Noongar woman from Western Australia. Now Terra Nullius is her brilliant debut novel and it was the winner of the Black and White Fellowship 2016, and it was also shortlisted for the Stella Prize, as well as a number of other awards. This is a novel of speculative fiction, but as the front quote tells us, the truth that lies at the heart of this novel is impossible to ignore. The book begins in an unnamed colony, but it reads as if it's taken from a textbook on Australian history. First, we meet Jackie. He's a young man who's been kept in servitude after having been snatched as a child and raised on a mission. He sees an opportunity to run away from this life of servitude and he takes it. We're also introduced to other characters, including the cruel and oppressive Sister Bagra, who oversees a mission of young native children. We too meet a man who has been known as Devil for so long that nobody actually knows his real name. He's the head of the Department for the Protection of Natives. And we meet Esperance, a young woman who is living in a refugee camp of sorts, trying to evade capture by the settlers. The first half of this book, as I said, could have been taken straight out of the early histories of Australian colonisation. It's very brutal and confronting. The author certainly doesn't shy away from any of the harsh realities. The settlers speak of the natives as being subhumans to justify forcibly taking them and so-called re-educating them into their ways. And then as they become adults, these children are just treated as slaves. They use any justification to kill a native person. So we know that if Jackie does get caught from running away, then he will be killed. There are a couple of early references to cars and things like that. So you know that it's not actually taking place in the 1700s, but I kind of, in my mind, I guess I placed it around the early 1920s when um, forced removal of children from their families was still a practice. The real mind trip comes about halfway through the book where you realise that this book is not history. It's not even nowadays. It's set into the future, the year of 2041. The settlers, they're actually aliens who believe themselves to be a superior race and have enslaved the humankind they've allowed to live as they've killed most people on the earth. It's now years into their occupation and the aliens are struggling with the dryness and the heat of their new home. They're also struggling to keep control of the restless natives who long to be able to return home and to resume their lives. The book shifts between points of view of a number of characters, both alien and human, and we learn the motivations and inner thoughts of all of them. There is the character of Johnny Starr, who, horrified by the actions of his own people, the settlers or the aliens, comes to be living among the natives. His narrative is complex and he's a character with both a history of brutality but also someone that has goodness in him. Coleman writes in a beautiful and engaging way. Her love of Australia and all of its landscapes and changing seasons is really evident throughout her words. I enjoy her character development and you come to care greatly about how things will turn out for them. She doesn't shy away from hard truths and even though the truths are wrapped in fiction, her intention for the book is clear. In an interview, she recently said that the entire purpose of writing Terra Nullius was to provoke empathy in people who had none. This book is a sobering reflection on Australian history, and while it is brutal at times, it does celebrate the humanity of people as well. It's heavy, but I felt there was real hope in the book as well. So this book we have available in audio from the Vision Australia Library if you'd like to have a listen. It's narrated by Victoria Howe, and it goes for nine and a half hours. You can add it to your bookshelf now, or if you would like to have a listen, please um, feel free to call the library on 1300 654 656 and we can add it for you.